Hello, I'm Professor Laura Manning Lee. I am going to be going over some general criteria and specific criteria for instruments. I am one of your preclinical faculty here at University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. And this is for the DPE 8111 periodontics course. And this is the clinical portion of that course. Hello. Here we are again. We're going to go over the H67204S. Both of uh, these are your sickle scalers. I will have the criteria sheet that you also have reference to in front of me to glance at to go over the instrument. Um, just when looking at this instrument, you will see it flares to the left here, and that means the tooth would be instrumentated on the right. Some H67 scalers are straight down the middle. This one happens to flare, so when it flares, in this case to the right, then the tooth would be on the left. Okay. Um, other things that are important is your modified pen grasp. Thumb across from the index finger with the middle finger on the functional shank and your ring finger is to fulcrum. On the pad of the ring finger is your fulcrum. So thumb index finger across from each other this allows you to roll. If you have them too tight, wrapped too close together, or this finger slipped off the shank, you will not have the same instrumentation ability. Okay? So have your space to allow rolling and put your middle finger under the shank and the middle finger against the ring finger. All these three fingers work together as a unit. If these collapse in any way or space apart in any way, this would be improper. Okay, so modified pen grasp looks like this. Okay, and we're going to instrumentate, we'll practice on 678, and I already determined with the flare that this is the side I'm going to apply to the tooth. So I'm going to apply from midline, fulcrum one to two teeth away from where we want to start the tooth we're instrumentating and this would be your modified pen grasp bumping into the junctional epithelium and the cervical gingiva and rolling now to the distal of that tooth and I put the terminal shank of the instrument slightly over the facial of the tooth before I start the stroke. So we call this front to back, this stroke here, side to side. Why do we call it that? Because my hand is shifting from side to side. The side of the hand to this side of the hand. And if I come to this way, it's from front to back, or you may hear some faculty say top to bottom is how we're instrumentating. Okay, I go to the next tooth and I shift over my fulcrum first. Now I apply it at the cervical margin midline of the adjacent tooth. And I'm going to roll and then more strokes. So we have front to back and side to side. Next tooth. Now I'm going to flip the instrument and do surfaces away. So I start again at the midline and roll. Okay. Hardly any lateral pressure needs to be used on the type of dot and or your patient partner in the beginning. What's more important is we have a firm fulcrum. So this fulcrum here is very firm. If I slip anywhere, I'm not going to slip far. If I have a fulcrum that's bouncing or loose and I slip, this can go anywhere, usually around the labial mucosa, buccal mucosa. So firm fulcrum. It's going to hurt you and your finger more than it ever hurts the patient to fulcrum firmly. Okay? And don't forget to roll. A lot of students will do the instrumentation and then do a big or they'll roll their wrist. Okay, we don't 
necessarily have to roll the wrist. Better ergonomics are as if you roll the finger or think of rolling the thumb. So we may say roll the thumb forward or back. And that's how you roll the instrument to adapt to the tooth better. Okay, I just wanted to be sure you notice my wrist and my forearm in this photo is very neutral. What we want to do is stay as neutral at all times as we can as opposed to flexing our wrist up or down. When we have this hyperflexion in opposite directions, we won't get the same motion out of the wrist. So to work, most of our instrumentation comes from rocking on the fulcrum, not from finger motion, not from bending our fingers, but from rocking on the fulcrum. And I can show you that on my hand. If I were to rock on that fulcrum, that's the instrumentation. Okay. Initiating these strokes, I use short one to three millimeter controlled strokes. Notice I'm rocking on my fulcrum. Now I'm rolling the instrument to the inner proximal. I'm going to move my fulcrum ahead. I'm bumping the back of the instrument. This is the back of the instrument. Bumping the back of the instrument into the gingival margin. Rolling the instrument with my nice neutral wrist rocking on the fulcrum and I'm doing from the midline this is side to side strokes I roll the instrument and now I'm doing front to back okay and I'm going to start that again starting from number six midline controlled short one to three millimeter strokes side to side stroke rolling the instrument front to back stroke from the facial rolling side to side short controlled strokes I can come all the way down to the contact point where I want to be sure to start the stroke is at the height of the gingival margin and we do the side to side stroke all the way I'm sorry front to back stroke all the way to the cervical margin. I just wanted to show you some instrumentation. If we were to do the lingual aspect of the mandibular teeth, this is anterior of course, so I'm starting from the midline and using two different strokes side to side on the direct lingual, rolling to the inner proximal, and then using front to back stroke. Okay, midline rolling and front to back side to side stroke on direct lingual and short controlled one to three millimeter strokes handles very close to parallel to create that cutting edge against the tooth